For anime Kohai viewers who would want to support the creator using Gcash, please send her your email so she can give you access to exclusive videos and latest episodes. Her Gcash number is 0948-690-7705 under her mom's name JL. Any amount of donations is highly appreciated. You may want to contact her at animekohai22 at gmail.com. The moment he laid eyes on the coins, the color of Duke Musée's face visibly changed. He must have realized that his plan of action had failed. You were seeking payment, right? Rigard declared. Very well. Here it is. All in dwarven gold coins. You could hear a pin drop in the hall. Please wait. Wait just a moment, Sir Rimoru. Duke Muse looked pretty panicked. It's a bit too late for that, isn't it? Yes? I coldly asked. Are, are these all dwarven gold coins? He asked, face contorting. Counterfeit currency is a clear violation. Hmm, is that really something you should be accusing me of? Because that really sounds pathetic, Muse. Rather a rude thing to say to Sir Rimuru. Diablo said, stepping forward. Benamaru was looking angry as well, and I was starting to get bad vibes from Sheehan behind me. I... My pardons. But is this really? If you doubt them. I said with a smile to the withering prince. Feel free to have them appraised. In that case, if you'll excuse me, I will use my trusty magic tools to examine them. It'd normally be unthinkable to interrupt a conversation between Duke Muse and me, but... Ah well, no point quibbling over little details. This merchant who just spoke up must have been a protege of the Duke, a colluder of sorts. No doubt these events disturbed him so much, he forgot his manners. He was a faker, not the real thing, not that I'm much of a real king myself yet, of course. But let's move on. Sir Rimuru, these reporters told me they wanted to write an article about these negotiations. What should we do? Shuna, after receiving my thought communication, spoke to me from behind the closed door, just as we had rehearsed. The journalists had gathered outside the room at Diablo's behest, and when I gave the signal, they'd burst inside to serve as witnesses. Well, they have impeccable timing, don't they? Benamaru replied. If we are going to appraise the coins, then let the press be in attendance as well. Then, as planned, the reporters entered the meeting hall. They, they're real. The shocked merchant, Kaluder bellowed. Of course they were. Indeed. One of the reporters said with a knowing look. And these are some impressive gold coins at that. Some of these date back to quite a long time ago. They may not have been circulated before now. Those were probably the ones Elmija had traded to me. I was sure she must have tons of them squirreled away somewhere. And with the reporters attesting to their value, the merchant could do nothing else. Even if he wanted to try swapping real ones out for fakes, the media was practically breathing down his neck, and if he did try that, then Soe, watching on from the shadows, wouldn't let that go unaddressed. So is everything settled, then? I believe our merchants were concerned about their payments, so go ahead and settle our accounts for me, if you could. Yes, yes my, my lord. lord. Rigard and Mjolmile said, answering my rather stuffy-sounding command. Producing a sheaf of documents and receipts, they began the payment process. It all went smoothly, under the watchful eye of the reporters. And you're the last one, then. Now we were all done. Our last piece of business for the Founders Festival was settled. Impressive, Sir Rimuru. I have no idea how you managed to assemble such a fortune in dwarven gold. Duke Muse looked dreadfully stiff now. In front of him were all those piles of coins, shining even after we paid them out. The merchants looked a tad confused themselves, unsure what to do now that things were off script. In the midst of this, the merchant I'd called the colluder spoke up. Well, as far as we're concerned, as long as you respect international law, we have nothing to complain about. We hope to continue doing business with you in the future. Um, we'll pass on that, thanks. I replied. The merchant stared at me, eyes wide open. So, for that matter, did my staff. What do you? Our business with you is complete. I said, as if stating the obvious. There's not going to be any more. My staff was now shocked. Only Diablo looked on with a smile. I suppose he was the only one who guessed what was on my mind here. That's too bad. I'm not sure I understand. What is the meaning of this? If you pay us, we can trust in you anytime. Are you looking down on us simple tradesmen? You know that nations can hardly trade with each other without traveling peddlers? The truth was beginning to set in, I suppose, as the merchants started shouting. Don't, you think, you are being quite rude to Sir Rimuru, the king of our nation? 
Xi'an burned with a quiet anger as she spoke. The merchants fell silent, no doubt sensing the danger. I figured I'd take advantage of the silence to finish things off. You know, I'm not into this cat and mouse stuff, so I'm just gonna come out and say it. You guys were the ones going on about how you couldn't trust our nation, weren't you? Well, trust is a two-way street. It requires both sides to believe in each other. I don't think it involves one side meekly accepting everything the other says to it. Myalmail asked you all multiple times to trust in us, didn't he? That, but, I mean, I understand what you're thinking here. We're monsters, and you know we want to trade with the Western nations, but you're not sure if we can truly abide by human rules, that kind of thing. Yes, exactly, and that is why. But, you know, that's why we suggested a compromise with bartering goods or using ancient coins. And you kicked all of that to the curb. Myalmail had practically thrown out his back bowing so much, trying to negotiate with them. But all the merchants here had laughed in his face. I wasn't about to forgive that. You guys only want to do business with people you can trust. And you know what? So do we. We only want to do business with people we can trust. Therefore, I refuse to allow any of you to conduct work in our nation. I won't ban you from entering, but don't expect permission to conduct commercial activities anymore. It took this declaration for the merchants to realize just how serious this was. We had a new market here, one that lots of people expected would balloon in size, and there was no place for them in it. The statement made Duke Musée turn white. If he didn't know yet that he had failed, he did now. I refuse to allow such tyranny. He shouted, unable to hold it in. These people were only asking for their justified rights under international law. Did he see being unable to trade with us as a problem? I certainly had plans to make this into a giant new economic union, one bigger than all the Western nations combined. That was probably why he wanted to join the bandwagon early and make friends with me, but if he could read us that far, he really shouldn't have taken this approach. I never show mercy to my enemies. Their rights, huh? I think you may have the wrong idea, so if you'll let me correct you real quick, our nation is not part of the Council of the West yet. I'd like to join them sometime, but if I can't, then so be it. I'm not gonna mind. Wow. I mean, we've already decided this land's going to be the center of a vast new economic bloc. Why? Because I want it to be. What kind of nonsense are you? Such arrogance, strictly on your own volition. It's not arrogance. We're all working together as a team toward the same goal, and we're bound to see results from it. All I'm doing is helping out. I was trying to make it sound all cool, but really, I was prioritizing the stuff I wanted to make happen first, I suppose. I wasn't sure I could deny claims of being arrogant, but I still had to lash back. And I want to be on equal terms with the Council of the West, too. But, you know, if they try to keep us down, then forget it. I'm not gonna force a relationship, we can just work through the free guild instead. Do you understand me? Besides, if we really needed to, we could sign individual pacts with each nation in the West, like we did with Blumand and the Dwarven Kingdom. There was no need to hurry things along. Just polish up our nation, make ourselves more valuable, and in time, we were bound to have a country that people would trust in. As far as I was concerned, that way of thinking was set in stone. All. Oh. All right. In that case, I will be glad to serve as an intermediary with the council. I think we have had some regrettable misunderstandings, but I hope I can be of aid to you, Sir Rimuru. Duke Muse is certainly a hard worker. Ah well. If he had retreated earlier, I wouldn't have needed to say all that stuff, but no. Um, I don't think I can ask for your help, Sir Muse. You've kind of lost your footing here already, you see? Um? Duke Muse froze, unable to parse what I'd just told him. Well, all right. It's settled anyway. I didn't want to say it myself, but at this point, explaining everything start to finish was probably the kindest approach. Once all the reporters here go back to their home nations, they're going to write articles. Articles about this struggle related to merchant payments behind the scenes of the Founders' Festival we held. They're going to make the truth clear, and I'm sure all the stories are gonna be very entertaining. Duke Musée's mind must have been racing. It was telling him what would come next, and the results made him look sicker and sicker. See, this was exactly why I didn't want to say it. Here, we have merchants who rejected our requests and demanded payment only in dwarven gold coins. Then we have this upper crust member of nobility who comes swooping in to unite them, even though he's not personally involved at all. If someone read that newspaper article, what would they think? I, um, that. Of course, that was all Diablo's doing. He had assembled the reporters, revealing the information in detail. 
that alone would prove we were justified as a nation, and most people would sense a conspiracy among the merchant ranks. I agreed with them. Information means something only if it's used correctly. Instead of fabricating the facts and trying to spread them around, it's always better to start with the facts and just hand them out. It was my discussions with Gazel and Elmija that helped me come up with this strategy, though. Diablo even personally thanked them, talking about how he still had a great deal to learn, and all. I thought they both helped us a lot this time, and I wanted to more amply repay them sometime soon. So there will be no need for you. Nyalmile, who you so thoroughly disrespected, has my full and utmost support, enough so that I trust all my nation's finances to him. He's been far more help to me than you have, for one. Duke Musée's face twisted in humiliation as the merchants began to look desperate. Meanwhile, the reporters were having much more fun than they expected when they first filed in. Some of them were rapidly taking down notes of the event, one they didn't mind recording, since they didn't take any of the fallout. A few even had expensive magic items for recording images of our negotiations. This was definitely gonna spread wide. The prince may have called the press over to save his own hide, but it wound up having quite the opposite effect. You can take care of the rest. I would be happy to, Sir Rimuru. I patted the shoulder of the deferential Mjolmile, whispering, Thanks, Molly. As I passed by and out of the room with my staff. It sort of felt like he smiled back at me, but I didn't see it on his face, his calculating eyes were back on Duke Muse, then on the merchants around the room. I don't think anyone would mind if I made him our chief financial manager. On the other side of the door, I could hear him speak. Now, since all our business has been settled, if I could ask everyone to accept their payments. His way of putting a final period on these events, I suppose. Chasing the duke out of town was gratifying, but we still had many problems to deal with. Thus, it was time for our customary review meeting. We were back in the usual meeting hall, not the fancier one for the festival's receptions and banquets. It was the night after the festival wrapped up, but a few guests were still around for this conference, Gazel, Elmija, Yam and his gang, Fuse, and even Yuki, Hanada, and Masayuki. They were joined by a few other rare invitees, all here on my invitation, and the rest of my staff were all on hand as well, making it a packed house. That's it for this video guys, thank you for always watching my videos, and supporting my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.